Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso and you're live on S3. Now, National Epilepsy Week will be taking place from the 13th to the 17th of February to raise awareness as epilepsy affects one in every 100 people in South Africa and approximately 50 million worldwide. Here to tell us more about epilepsy is Wendy Neft, the director of Epilepsy South Africa, the Western Cape branch. And then you've got Zainab Mosamu is here, who is a board member and persons living with epilepsy. And then we've got Tando Yankosi Sosibo, who is a community strengthening social worker. And I brought the cavalry here to make sure <laughs> that you are well equipped with everything that you need and a panel who can answer any questions on 063-408-8863. Welcome. I got the best panel here. I recruited <laughs> the best that we could. And I think this is such a great opportunity to educate. You know, I believe education and hope they live in the same house. Yes, and I want to make sure that this is conversation is about right. that. But Wendy, mm -hmm. let's start from an epilepsy perspective. Uh, you've got to start us from basics. What okay. is epilepsy? Let's start there. Yeah, good place to start. Yeah, you know what I mean, you know, just in case. I won't go into much detail okay. because it will come through as we discuss. Absolutely. Uh, basically, epilepsy um, is a neurological condition. Yes. It's one of the most commonest neurological conditions. Yeah. And one's often sort of say, really? It's an invisible condition. But if you think of it globally, there are 50 million, approximately 15 million people who have epilepsy at any given time, yeah. at any age, at any stage. So in terms of epilepsy, it's um, a very complex um, condition to describe because it presents itself in different ways. So people would be confused because the one would just have the whole brain going, generalized seizures. Yeah. Some of it's with the front, and I'm not gonna give too much detail at this stage, where it's focal seizures. And then a lot of children, particularly in the classroom, could also have um, your absence seizures, okay. where the child stares blankly at the teacher in yeah. the class. And yeah. the teacher might think, that the, the child is just daydreaming. And therefore, yeah. that the child loses out of that one minute of interaction. So coming to awareness, yeah. there are so many challenges. Excuse my voice. No, no so, <laughs> there are so many challenges that, that people with epilepsy faces with. And because of that, we've got to raise awareness. And because it's an invisible condition. Yes. And when somebody actually sees a person having a seizure, you know, their understanding of epilepsy does not enable them to assist the person. And this is what we need to do. We need to raise awareness and education, firstly, on the level of the condition. Now, we are not medical professionals. Our approach is from a psychosocial approach, mm -hmm. where we look at the person within its totality, all the different systems that works around the person. Yeah. So it's not just one incident, that it's, it's a totality that we work on. So having said that now, um, so that's the person that we've got to raise. Since the diagnosis of a child um, with epilepsy, yeah. that is the most traumatic part for the parents. Yes. Because the parents basically grieve the life of a healthy bunny boy. Yeah. And the child then presents with epilepsy. So that is where social workers will intervene. And we do have a service at Red Cross Hospital yes. where um, parents with children with epilepsy would be referred to. Then you look at the awareness around mainstreaming. Children are often kept isolated because yeah. that is what society creates. It's isolation, it's discrimination. And because of that, they are left behind either locked up indoors, because schools won't accept them. And that's mainstream schools. And we have limited special, what we call special needs uh, schools for children with different types of learning disabilities. You know, Wendy, I, I'm gonna allow you to express yourself as much as you can, because we, we, we have three parts to this. This is only part one. We've got uh, Zainab, who's gonna share her 
opinions and, of course, her feelings on a, an individual who is living with epilepsy. We've got a social worker in Tando who will also be sharing as well. And naturally, this conversation is about education and awareness for epilepsy. Uh, so let's make sure that you get your questions in as well. Don't be afraid to ask them. That's why we are here. 063-408-8863. We'll be back with more of our epilepsy chat in the next couple of minutes. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Espresso on S3. And epilepsy awareness is vitally important. And if you are somebody who lives with epilepsy or is a supporter of an individual, I think it's important to lean forward to your TV. Because we've got Wendy Neft over here. Uh, we've got Zainab Mosam. We've got Tando Yankosi, Sosibo, our panel, who will be chatting a bit more about epilepsy, South Africa's cause, and making sure you get all the information you need, especially heading into the National Epilepsy Week that starts on the 13th. Now, do you know that 75% of people with epilepsy will experience their first seizure before the age of 20? However, most seizures are over quickly and are easily dealt with. However, that is no reason to just stop right there. We have to dig in, and that's why we have our panel of uh, experts chatting to you. So, Zainab, I needed to chat to you very quickly on an individual living with epilepsy. From when you discovered it to now, what has that been like for you? Well, um, I'm, 25, I'm turning 25 this year, yeah. but I had my first seizure when I was 12 years old. Wow. It was a day like any other, but it's a day my life changed forever. Yes. I woke up on the floor with a five-hour memory lapse. No idea what had happened. My parents were terrified, and so was I. Mm. And I was heavily medicated from a young age yeah. because I, my epilepsy was quite hard to treat. And being heavily medicated as a child caused permanent cognitive impairment, right? It affected me, um, it affected my concentration, it affected my academics. Um, but if I had to fast forward five years, yeah. I found an epilepsy specialist, right? And that helped uh, manage my anxiety because I had that anxiety of waking up anywhere in a strange place all alone on the floor with a memory lapse. It is the most terrifying thing. Um, but as soon as I started seeing my epilepsy specialist, he informed me that I suffer from three types of seizures, namely the generalized tonic-clonic seizures, which are the full body convulsions, yes. myoclonic seizures, which are involuntary muscle jerks, which can get very violent, right? as well as absence seizures, which I still experience to this day, oh, but of course I don't know. <laughs> right? But mm. I have been seizure-free for two and a half years. Mm. And um, wow. after seeing my doctor and after balancing my medication, I was able to achieve a 71% pass in matric. Mm. And mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, please continue testifying. I'm listening. <laughs> yes, girl. And then yeah. I went on to achieving a Bachelor of Laws degree from the University of the Western Cape. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, I started working a full-time job as a trainee to become a compliance officer. And with that, last year, I simultaneously obtained a diplomas from the University of the Western Cape and the University of Kwazulu Natal. And the reason why I want to tell you all of this is because epilepsy does not define who you are. It does not define who you are as a person yeah. or intellectually. Right? Say up. Hmm. You are an inspiration. And I think anybody who is feeling that, that feeling at hmm. the moment, that anxiety, that's that suffering feeling. Mm. I feel like what you've done is you've given them a lot of hope because you've walked the path and you are here right now. And I hope you're proud of yourself because I'm proud of you and you've <laughs> just met. And this is the, it's the best, most amazing feeling. Mm. A lot of people feel like they're in a struggle and they're alone. But this is why we're having this conversation. Because if you are an epilepsy uh, sufferer, if you want to call it that, you know, you don't have to suffer. Mm. There are so many avenues for you. And that's why awareness is so important. Mm. So uh, I just want to say, Tando, uh, with regard to awareness, as a social worker, why is this so important? Oh, okay. So awareness is so important because epilepsy is like... Um, an invisible condition yes. which people cannot actually see. You only start seeing when a person starts having a seizure. And um, epilepsy was it happens when a person has like a recurrence of seizures. Yes. So the reason it's so important for us to raise awareness is to educate everyone all, all around the world about epilepsy to know that um, 
a person with epilepsy yes. is just as normal as anyone. It's just a condition. And like um, Zainab said, it doesn't define who you are. And to educate people about epilepsy, um, and also to advocate for the human rights of the persons with epilepsy, which is what we do as Epilepsy South Africa. And yeah, to raise awareness yeah. so that people know more what to do and how to handle or be with a person who has epilepsy. And also to highlight like the challenges that people with epilepsy actually have or actually that they go through and just to give the support. Um, so yeah, just to educate give support, um, raise awareness, and make sure that everyone in the world is informed um, yeah. with how epilepsy is, what epilepsy is, and how you help a person who has epilepsy. And actually, that is a massive comfort for any community, individual, supporter. Mm. And that's why we are here today with these three mm. uh, amazing women who will be you know, covering a lot of stigma uh, talk in the next couple of minutes around epilepsy. As you can imagine, it's very rife in every community. Uh, but also about Epilepsy South Africa and what they do. If you have any questions, 63 8863 We continue our conversation in the next couple of moments. It's my feel-good breakfast show. It is your feel-good breakfast show, Expresso. You're live in S3, and we are continuing our conversation around the National Epilepsy Week that is coming up shortly. We've got Wendy Neft here, uh, Zainab Mosam, as well as Tanu Yankosi, Sosibo, uh, just to chat more about epilepsy. Now, one in 20 people will have a seizure at some time in their lives. However, this doesn't mean that they have epilepsy. And thank you for your questions. In fact, Nomolelo has a voice note that uh, she sent in. Good morning, team. How does a person get diagnosed with epilepsy? Does it have a specific age or anyone can be diagnosed with epilepsy? Thank you. Thank you, Nomolelo. I do appreciate that. Just to reiterate, uh, ladies, how, do you, how does one know if you have epilepsy? How do they get diagnosed? Uh, any one of you can take it. Okay. Um, Tanda, you want to take it? Cool. Yes. Um, um, epilepsy doesn't have any age or any race or any economic status. Anyone can have epilepsy at any stage of their lives. Um, and um, epilepsy, like, it's... I don't know how to actually like put it in words, but you yeah. you, you can't you will not know when you have ep epilepsy unless you start having seizures, and those seizures must be a recurrent, and then you have to go to the doctor or the okay. neurologist because they are the only people that can actually say, okay, this is actually epilepsy, or maybe you are just having a seizure, maybe because of stress or maybe because of depression okay. or whatever you might be going through. Because seizure, if a seizure can happen like once, it might be because of something else, not because of like that you have epilepsy. So, yes. yeah. I think that the key word is that mm. don't panic mm. uh, because there are people like uh, Epilepsy South Africa and their great staff who are here to assist and help you with education. In fact, Wendy, mm. what is it exactly that Epilepsy South Africa does for the mm. community, especially in this space? Correct. I think you need to come and join us because the first thing is don't panic. No. Okay. <laughs> and touching on Tandin Kozi yes. is that because there's a range of, of different epilepsies, people must not fear. Yeah. If they have one seizure, it doesn't mean that you have epilepsy. It has to be recurrent. And I yes. think that is what, if it's your only seizure, doesn't mean. So coming back to the services, yes, just very please. quickly, um, we are a national organisation yes. and branches in different provinces. We in the Western Cape. And our focus is a lot around advocacy, economic development, particularly in our climate with high unemployment rates. Yeah. And the early intervention, and that is where we try to get the kids into schools, support the schools. We have training sessions at schools for the learners and educators on how to manage the seizure in the classroom. But there's more to it than that. The counselling will come yes. when Tandikozi talks about that. So it is about getting awareness out, community strengthening. It is about going to the community yeah. and identifying people that you can build their own capacity to advocate for their own rights. We walk with people, yeah. not alongside and not in front of them. So that. that is what we do. We have forums of people who are independent and we are the support system to them. And that's amazing because they can get to know all the counsellors and, you know, we try and match them with the resources. Yeah. So then in terms of other small... Um, no, sorry, not small. It's family support groups. 
um, it's training big by now. Yeah. Um, especially with the triple B double E employment of people with epilepsy. Awareness, awareness at that level with corporates. We also do leadership training and we also try and face some, um, place some people into the open place, open yeah. marketplace. So there's a range of, of services. And I think on our website, people will see yes. there's additional information of every stage of yeah. the person's life. So please have a look at the website. Of course you will. In fact, we've got all the details on screen. We've had three amazing experts wrapping this up, though. And I think one important thing is that individuals living with epilepsy, at, you know, there's no panic over here. We have Epilepsy South Africa here, and we've got a story like Zainab's, which is so powerful, that can drop any stigmas around individuals with epilepsy. Uh, they are humans who are going to contribute to the community with support, with assistance like any one of us. So uh, let's uh, raise awareness from 13 to 17 February. It is Epilepsy Week. Share it with a friend, and let's bring awareness to the community today.